Trust. It's a simple word with five letters, but the meaning behind it is pretty deep. The definition of trust is the firm belief in the reliability, truth, or ability of someone or something. You trust someone because you know you could count on them. You trust someone because you know they won't turn their back against you. It's hard to trust someone because you never knew if they were true to you. That's the reality. When you did trust them, it was probably the most comfortable thing in your life, knowing that you can at least count on them. But when they turn against you, you felt sudden betrayal and the pain that you never ever experienced before. Sometimes the surface doesn't explain literally everything. The following are characters that can define the term trust. The reason I put them both together is because I already mentioned Nathan Prescott in the first episode, so I won't repeat myself too much here. But the truth is, Nathan Prescott is someone you should trust. Right from the beginning, we found out that Nathan was the school richest person, since his family owned the town and literally everything, which lets him able to do anything and able to get away from any trouble, even taking the life of a young girl and probably more people out there that we don't know. From there on, we do everything we could to tell everything to everyone about his wrongdoing. But no one trusts us, which makes us really hate this character and we want to take him down so badly. But as we dive deeper, it turns out he was not that evil. In fact, he has mental issues that have to rely on medical supply to keep himself mentally intact. But to make it even worse, his family never cared for him at all just because they want to protect their reputation, which eventually led him to be manipulated by certain art guys. And in the end, his ending wasn't that good either, and we end up taking the bait because we wanted to bust Nathan for his crime. Like I said, you can't judge a person from the first glance even if you think he's evil. We were so busy finding evidence that we end up looking at the wrong clue. Nathan is a great example on why we should pay close attention around us, since there will be evidence that led us to the actual truth and not the ones that we always think he is. Which brings us to the next person. My god, just when we thought we can somewhat trust a good person, he turns out to be the main villain in the game. Jefferson aka Psychotic Art Guy as I like to call it, is a smart villain where he doesn't drop too much clue unless you pay close attention. The way he acted and talked doesn't feel like a villain at all. Sure, he can be mean to Max but remember, he got a big responsibility as a lecturer to lead his student to be successful in his class. After all, if the student failed or got poor result, he is the one that have to give the explanation to the higher ups. We also see his high integrity. We see Victoria begging her way to win the Everyday Hero contest. Jefferson doesn't seem to be bothered and just move along with his life ignoring Victoria. Which convinces us that he is innocent and we can defend him till the end to find the truth. But then it starts falling apart when Max and Chloe went to the barn and found out about the dark room. With camera equipments and files everywhere, our suspicions continue to grow down the road. And with episode 4 conclusion, he was the real mastermind all along, shattering all our hopes of defending him, revealing himself to be a disgusting freak. Things he did got some artistic value, but for the wrong reason. You do not drug people just to get your stupid photo. And the more I think about it, the more I felt disgusted. How could someone nice looking like him turns out to be a such horrifying creature? That my friend is why you should not trust someone from the look himself. Also known as the step douche, David Madsen is a character that was introduced in Before the Storm, which was despised by Chloe Price since he tried to be the new replacement for her biological dad. Right from the moment, 
we were led to think that he's not a good guy and he is trying to budge his way into the family based on Chloe's perspective, which continues on throughout the game. But along the way, he tried to convince Chloe and player that he's innocent because he wanted to rebuild the broken family and try to run it as it was back then, but was rejected by Chloe. It wasn't until episode 3 where David showed Chloe a picture of him and his friend that died during the soldier days. Remember, he is an ex-soldier, further convincing that he's a normal person that wants a happy family. I mean, just imagine, your child get expelled from school or just got into some big trouble and you as parents will definitely be worried for sure. Just like what David felt when Chloe lost her chances in school. I see what David's main intention is, but his approach rubbed Chloe the wrong way. As William Price is gone not too long ago and immediately someone tried to take his place which caused misunderstanding between those two. I can see where Chloe coming from. Both never make peace and Chloe remained the same way as she is while David got a new job as a security guard at Blackwell Academy which takes us right into Life is Strange Season 1. Just when we thought we can start trusting him again, the game throws another curveball at us when Max found out Chloe's house are filled with hidden cameras everywhere. Like, what the fuck? Why would you do that in your house? Can't you respect? people's privacy? Right from the get go, the game threw all the trustworthy elements of David out of the window and make us despise him again. Not only that, it also reveals that David did use some violence on Chloe when she didn't listen to the rules, which makes things even worse on David's side. Not only that, when Kate Marsh was bullied and drugged, we see David keeps following her and constantly taking photos of her whereabouts and store the files in his computer as he seems like he wanted to get some sort of information, making him looking like a terrible human being. When the school starts investigating about Kate, the player got to choose who to put the blame on. Back then, because I hate David and think he's not a good guy, I got him kicked out on his job, not knowing the true villain is nearby. His life continues to went downwards when he gets mad at Max for the whole Kate incident. Should you side with Chloe, he will get no one to trust as Joyce too doesn't want him in the house, making him the players think the threat have been stopped and oh boy we were so wrong. Fast forward to episode 5 where Max was kidnapped, guess who showed up? That's right, David himself. After a couple of tussles with Jefferson, I mean the creepy art guy, we learned that David was innocent all along and he was trying to investigate what's going on with the school, especially with those missing girls. And fortunately, he found out about Kate and thus he did all he could to find the truth. And at that moment, as if someone just slapped my face 30 times. All this time, we have a mindset with David being a bad guy and we kept sticking into it while being persuaded by people in our surroundings. When we think back, we didn't give him any chance to explain himself and instead jumped to the conclusion. He was a good guy all the time who just wanted to keep everyone safe in the town, including his family. Trust itself came a long way before finding his way onto David, and we indeed owe him a lot. The more I think about it, the more I felt bad about him. He never got chances to explain himself, and when he did, it's already too late. Next up is Frank Bowers, a dealer who sells drugs to people including Chloe, a person who lives an ordinary life in his personal RV. Nothing suspicious to worry about, right? Wrong. The appearance of Sarah, Rachel's real mother, starts making things complicated for himself. When Chloe tried to ask about her, he refused to say anything, nor wanted to mention her, slowly filling up the suspicious old meter. And we start asking if we can trust him. The truth is, we can. Because he wasn't fully involved in the situation, but his friend, aka partner, Damon Merrick, was. We can all blame James Amber for this since he wanted Damon to get rid of Sarah. That's when we can understand what Frank going through. He wanted to tell the truth, but he also cared about his friend, so he can only remain quiet. 
he's stuck in a neutral point. We can see this when Chloe did everything Frank requested in order to gain his trust to unlock the truth. But when Damon showed up with him, he was thrown back into the corner and have to make a choice. Because Damon and Frank able to trust each other, their bonding become much stronger and solid, thus building the bridge of trustness. Take for example, when Damon tried to hurt someone, Frank is always there to stop. And every time he did, Damon did come down and stop going after the person. That is how trust can be built. Damon and Frank are the best example of both trusting each other. But everything has its limit. In the end, Frank can't take it anymore and ends up stopping Damon for good. But there's a price. He ends up losing the one partner he always counted on. Trust seemingly doesn't exist anymore and remains that way until Chloe suspects Frank having relationship with Rachel. But unfortunately, both games didn't explain well enough about those two, creating a plot hole. So I'm just gonna leave it there. But my point is, Frank stuck between two ends and trust is crucial. He have only one choice, pick one side and deal with it. In the end, what I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't fully trust people, even if you think they're good all the time. Because believe me, there are many people that always manipulate people around them. And some people are so pretentious that you cannot see the crack under their mask. And this game was able to deliver the message to the players about the trust issues and the guilty behind it. Don't get distracted by anything in surroundings because every clue can be a key to unlock the door to the truth. That, my friend, is the term trust.